It's been a crazy month for laptops, and while yes, the M1 MacBooks have sort of stolen the show for me over the last several of weeks, they weren't the only laptops released at the tail end of 2020. Let's not forget that the Razer Blade 13, one of the original Power Ultrabooks, also had an updated 11th generation Intel processor drop. And in the background of the past couple of months, I've been continuing to try this out, even with my brain shattered by the new MacBooks. So how has the smallest of the Razer Blades held up after all of that time? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And I gotta open it back up. See, I told you, I am absolutely a hybrid Windows slash Mac user, and my love of laptops doesn't only mean laptops that have Mac OS built into them. It is a big chunk of my heart, but it's not the only chunk of mine. There's room in my heart for all sorts of laptop brands. And while there is a Razorbook 13 inch model out there that is supposedly more in my wheelhouse as a productivity machine, doesn't have a graphics card, which as somebody that dabbles in both living the nine to five PowerPoint creating awesome life that we all strive to be, it's boring. We don't all strive to do it. And you know, I straddle that in the video editing, photo editing, YouTuber life, even though this is a gaming laptop, the Blade Stealth is a gaming laptop. It actually fits my needs and productivity needs of those sorts much better. So let's quickly go over the specs and ordering options. If this is the first time you've heard about this demure Titan, of technology. Do I say Titan a lot? I feel like I say Titan an awful lot. This newest version of the Razer Blade 13 comes equipped with the brand new Intel Core i7 1165G7, which is a four core CPU clocked in at 2.8 gigahertz. It has a 13.3 inch full HD display running at 120 hertz refresh rate, an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti graphics card, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 solid state drive. And all of that all of those specs will run you $1,799. Ooh, that's pretty steep. That's, uh, that is a steep, that's an expensive laptop. If you haven't purchased from Razer before, they don't do it the same way that Dell or Apple does, where you have a base model and you can bolt on additions as you see fit from that base model. Like you can add more RAM, more storage, and sometimes you can even add bigger processors. However, what you see here is what you get. Now there is a touchscreen version that has a touch enabled OLED panel for $1,999, but you do have to give up some refresh rate with that quote unquote higher end model. And that OLED display can only achieve a 60 Hertz refresh rate. Those are the overview on the specs. I don't wanna to get too much in depth. Now we'll cover more specs and features as we need them when we come across, because honestly, I don't like talking about specs all that much. Specs are boring and you could just absolutely go out and read the website, read the spec sheet to get the same sort of information. What I wanna do is this is an X time later video. I wanna talk about the things that I've really liked and the things that I've disliked in all of my time with this laptop. And would I recommend this to somebody trying to get as much performance out of their machine in as little space as possible? Unfortunately, there will also be a new section in this video because there's some things about here that I'm pretty meh about and there's enough of them that it needed its own section. So first off, let's start off with the things that I dislike and the very, the number one thing I dislike about this machine is the price. You heard me cringe, like you heard me hurt earlier when I said it, $1,799 is very, very expensive for a laptop. My Razer Blade 15 that I've enjoyed so much and have recommended a lot, I absolutely thought that was one of the best laptops of 2020, that costs less than this. And it's got a better graphics card, it's got better IO, better processor, better almost everything. And sure, it's a little bit bigger, but at what point is the computer design impractical for what you are trying to achieve? And I'm I'm actually struggling writing this script because I do like the Razer Blade 13. It's a lot of what I liked in the 15, but smaller and more portable and with a more convenient power adapter. But price to performance, it's kind of rough. It's full disclosure, it's kind of rough. And I want, you to, I want you to keep this in mind throughout the rest of the video. Everything that I'm gonna talk about is in a very expensive laptop. The next thing that I dislike about the Stealth 13 is because of that smaller size or because Razer just wanted you to lose out on the ability to upgrade all of the same things that you could on, again, the bigger model, get used to this. Because I do consider the Blade 15 a yardstick. Like that is a very, very excellent laptop that I like to compare other laptops against. And what I mean is, here, you only get a single M.2 drive that you can change out. That's it. No user upgradable RAM and no user upgradable second M.2 spot, which severely hampers what you can actually do with the laptop. 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
That's it. That's all you can get even if you hypothetically had an unlimited budget. There is no way to get 32 or 64 gigabytes of memory here. Okay, so yes, if you had an unlimited budget, you could probably just start your own laptop business that makes a version of these that has access to more memory. But for this thought exercise, you have unlimited money that you would only want to spend that vast wealth on two sticks of DDR4 memory. Thought experiments can be tough. I do accept that because of the size, there will be shortcomings. This one kind of sucks though, because one of the benefits of Windows laptops is that upgradability. And the third thing that I do not like about the Stealth 13 is the graphics card. The GTX 1650 Ti is kind of getting long in the tooth, which sounds crazy as it was released in April of 2020, but it's just not very good. Graphics cards, especially Nvidia, have done some incredible things over the last couple of years. And the 1650 Ti, no matter when it was released, it misses the mark for me because it has no ray tracing cores, no tensor cores, and it uses the older version of the NVENC encoders that were updated in the 1660 and up models. And those new NVENC encoders are legit magic, especially if you're a video editor. And this is just a huge misstep for a graphics card on a supposed powerhouse machine that I almost can't get over. I know there's only so much space in here. You got to manage heat. You got to manage power. You got to manage all that stuff. But if you are doing any kind of graphics work, it barely works, which I get it. A graphics intensive work is not the point of an ultra book, but again, back to that price. If you were going to charge this much for a laptop, you should figure out a way to get a more useful graphics card in there. And the last thing that I dislike enough to mention that in the dislike category is something that the 13 actually has in common with the 15. This laptop is made out of some kind of space age material that is designed to pick up fingerprints. This computer smudges the second you touch it. It's as clean as you see it right now because I cleaned it before we started doing this shot. I've And I've been doing my best to not handle this computer too roughly over the last two months, but it's basically always covered in some kind of a smudge. Check this out. Look at that. All I did was touch it and you can already see the smudge. We can't, we can't have that for the video though. It's gonna drive me crazy. There we go. That's pretty good. I don't normally put skins on my computers. In fact, the only computer that I've ever put a skin on is the Razer Blade 15 because this can just look terrible, which sucks because the build quality is a huge positive. And you know what? It's my video. We'll, let's just talk about the positives right now. So the build quality is amazing. We'll, okay, we'll stop beating up this poor well, it's not poor, this rich laptop. And this might be my favorite looking laptop of all time. I love how muted and how high quality this looks from basically every angle. I love, can you see this? I love that the little Razer logo doesn't have a light in it, making this a much more professional looking laptop. I just love the matte nature of the aluminum build. The speakers look great, the screen looks great, the undercarriage with the thermal cooling system is built just very, very well. This is a premium laptop and it looks like a premium laptop. Once you take all of those dorky stickers that, and I know Windows laptops by law must have all of those dorky stickers. And once you take them off, it looks really good. And okay. Moment of honesty with between us, between us here, moment of honesty. I do kind of like the look of the new Intel Core i7 stickers. I will eventually take it off, but I do very much like how it looks. The next thing that I really like about the Razer Blade 13 is the port selection. As Ultrabooks have gotten smaller and smaller, it is harder and harder to fit standard size ports into them. I mean, look at my beloved MacBooks. The new ones only have two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports and they're right next to each other and it's really frustrating. And while yes, the Razer Blade 13 does only have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, another thing that I very much like, it also has two USB-A ports and in a move straight out of what I've been asking Apple to do for a long time, the ports are on opposite sides. So you get one Thunderbolt 4, one USB-A, one Thunderbolt 4, one USB-A. It's just wonderful. If you are somebody that bounces back and forth between laptop mode and dock mode, it's so much easier to fit this laptop into a bigger setup when you can power it from one side and plug in accessories to the other side. Or if you're just out and about and you need a wired mouse and a wired keyboard, it's got USB-A. And with the versatility of the newest generation of Thunderbolt 4, this is basically the most versatile small laptop that I've ever seen. Look, ports are important. That is a solid dad pun. Got to high five myself for that one. Next up in the things I like is even though this is a small ultrabook clocking in at 13 inches, it does have the extra camera next to the webcam 
to enable Windows Hello. Now, Windows Hello, if you normally are in the Apple ecosystem, Windows Hello is basically Face ID. And I admit to having a complicated relationship with biometric technology. I like having biometric tools to unlock my stuff when it's in a properly working system. It can just make your devices secure but also a breeze to use. The best biometric systems are the ones that you can barely tell are there, or you can train yourself through habit to use it in such a way that there is no friction. And which style, I guess which style I prefer, really kind of comes down to the device I'm using. When it comes to cell phones, I think I easily prefer some kind of fingerprint reader, which the Blade 13 is lacking. But when we're talking more traditional computers, I think I prefer the face unlocking ability, whatever it's called. That's not true either. What I really prefer is to have both methods of unlocking on all of my technology, but it just seems like we have to pick one or the other. Just give us both. Don't make us pick. That's what we really want. We want options. Here's where we have to divert to our newest section and start talking about all of the meh things. The keyboard, it's okay. It's okay, I've used a ton of laptop keyboards and this is definitely in the below average category. It's perfectly functional and it's laid out in a way that I very much like. All of the keys are easily reachable with my normal size hands and I like the row of function keys up at the top much like my MacBook Air. I also don't normally like overly garish RGB technology but what I like here is that you do have total control over the backlit colors and intensity through the Razer pre-installed app, and you can design this to look really great and work very well if you're not in the brightest of conditions. And you know what? The trackpad isn't half bad either for a Windows laptop. It's nice and large, it lets you have a decent click over most of the trackpad surface, and it has very good palm rejection if you were just working from this as like you're working straight off the keyboard. But for all of those benefits, it kind of trips out of the blocks because the keys are kind of mushy. Can you hear that? they're not very enjoyable to type on. A big part of getting a lot of productivity work done is getting into a typing rhythm. And this is one of the harder laptops to get into that rhythm. The keys just, they kind of mush when you press down and there's almost none of that spring back that you feel on better caps. So they hit all the right notes when laying out the keyboard, but when they went to design the keys themselves, they're just kind of meh. Something else that I'm kind of meh about is the battery life. This 11th gen Intel chip is on a 28 watt, so it does have a decent power efficiency. Well, when we talk about Windows computer, but battery life just falls short of passable. Now my metric for success is one eight hour day of use. I do think in an actual work environment with the computer being open and then shut for meetings and then open again and taking breaks and coming back to it. I do think in reality, you would get that longevity in a practical sense. Plus as it is a Windows laptop, when you are running off the battery, you will suffer a cumulative power loss. The system limits the power to the CPU and the GPU when working off the battery, and that limitation gets more pronounced the lower the battery life goes. Now that's not a dig against this specific laptop. It's an all Windows laptops kind of thing, but it's definitely something to consider here if you're gonna be using this as the small travel laptop it's really designed to be. And unfortunately, the next meh for me is in thermal performance, and you know how much I'm on thermal performance when it comes to laptops. And Intel chips, okay, all standard processors generate a non insignificant amount of heat when in use. And laptops, their most important goal is to get that heat away from the processor and away from the internals so that you do not get thermal limitations in place on your processor because it gets too hot. And in good news, I've seen no issues with the CPU throttling in my normal use case. I answer emails, I've made scripts with this, I've done 4K video editing calendar syncing, all of the standard working stuff. This does seem to be properly thermally managed. The reason I met on it though is because it's constantly warm, bordering on hot. Now while typing this script, just sitting with the laptop in my laps, the fans were on loud enough to hear them while the body of the laptop was keeping me nice and toasty, which it is December, so I think that's a good thing when it's freezing outside. We just gotta be looking at the silver lining. This can double as like a warming blanket. That brings me to the next thing that I'm pretty mit about the power and I'm trying really hard not to compare this laptop based on computers that are physically bigger or have a different style of hardware architecture that's specifically designed for its own system of programs. I bet you can imagine what I'm talking about there. But going back to the price of this laptop, it's hard to give this a pass from that perspective. The power is fine for all of my normal tasks, but that's not remarkable. Laptops have been able to do that for years now. You don't need some kind of cutting edge five nanometer processor technology to make a PowerPoint slide. 
you don't need that at all. The laptop that my work gave me, believe me, is not that powerful. And the Razer Blade 13 will run your normal suites fine. Plus, if you do buy this to get some mobile gaming in, it works fine with older titles. It's fine, but it's only okay. Single core score is fine. Multi core score is it's okay when we measured in Cinebench, but it's just everything is okay. Everything is okay, but this is not an okay priced laptop. And that's the thing, right? You can't look at specs in a vacuum because one of the biggest deciding factors when looking for new technology, price always, always comes into it. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Man, I gotta tell you, this video ended up way longer than I thought it would because this laptop is both great and not great at the same time. This is such a high quality build, excellent display for such a small device, perfectly spaced, versatile port selection. It's almost like Razer purposefully built a laptop shell for me, but the keyboard is only okay, the performance is only okay, and the price is just so much more than its competition. If you are looking for the smallest, best laptop to get work done for a reasonable price and to be able to travel and take it anywhere, the MacBook Air is currently the reigning champion. It costs almost half of what this does, has almost three times the battery life, and depending on your software requirements, it beats this in performance as well. However, if you are looking for a powerful mobile Windows laptop, I'd probably just recommend the bigger brother to this, the Razer Blade 15. It's incredible for the price. It's cheaper than the 13, has a much better graphics card, it has a better, if older, processor, better battery life, and a way better port selection. All of that for a computer that's not that much bigger than this 13. And that's where I'm struggling looking for positives. The size difference isn't great enough for the power and cost sacrifices of the 13 Stealth, in my opinion. It's a decent option if you can find this for sale or used somewhere, but there are way better options out there for the small laptop marketplace. And if you like this video and are now you're a little more curious about the 15 inch razor blade, here is my follow up video for that one that you can find by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.